All right, there we go. Cody, can you hear me? Hopefully, I'm here, man. How are you? Perfect. Great, man. Great. We're uh, we're live here, having people starting to jump in. So, uh, we're really, really excited to have you on today. Thanks again. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's do this. I'm yeah. ready to talk some real estate. Let's do it. Uh, awesome. And again, reminder for everybody here too. Um, we have an eye on the comments uh, section going. So. Um, feel free. We want to make this a conversation. Feel free to jump in at any point, you know, make a Q&A. You've got, you know, we've got Cody's time here, which, uh, you know, I'll, I'll intro you, Cody, here for the, you know, one person who doesn't know who you are on our end. But, uh, you know, it's excited to have you on again today. Um, you know, special Lunch and Learn edition with Cody Sperber. I know you're a returning guest for us. Uh, your last interview got amazing, uh, amazing response from our community. So, um, you know, we were, uh, we had people clamoring to have you back on. So excited to be able to fulfill that for people as well. That's awesome. um, to give you, to give people context again, uh, Cody's CEO and founder of Clever Investor, um, your real estate investing mentor and education company. Um, you're the OG investor. Like you're one of the top, one of the top in, uh, educators in the space in the world. And been at the education side for over 12 years, right? Mm. Mm. There you go. Yeah. You know, so somewhere around there. And then I know you've done, you know, uh, over a thousand deals. You're incredibly active on the flipping side as well. Been doing that for over 16 years. Um, on top of all that, you're a speaker, an author, philanthropist, mentor, um, and you've helped so many with the free house formula, which we're going to be talking about today. So um, really excited to have you on. Ex you know, love your your content as well on things like Instagram, where you've got oh, 1.2 million followers on there. So um, clearly, have made uh, quite quite an impact on people, and excited to have you. Uh, you know, do the same for our community. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. By, by the way, that um, that was a fantastic intro. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, we come, we come uh, ready to go for you, Cody. So, uh, yeah, we're 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 uh, ready to have some. Yeah, fun let, let me let me say something about Matt. Okay, Matt is the world's greatest follow up king. He <laughs> is so good. I, I'm I'm not kidding. Anybody he wants to do business with, he is fantastic at chasing you down, getting in front of you, and just. Uh, building that relationship so you want to do things with him. So great job, Matt. I mean, Deal Machine is very lucky to have you. I appreciate that. I, I, I uh, you know, I <laughs> didn't, you know, uh, didn't ask you to say that, but appreciate the kind words, man. And, and you know, we, again, like really, really enjoy having you on. So uh, that's why I wanted to follow up so much as I, you know, I'm, when I know it's a great fit, when I know our community loves it, uh, you know, I want to want to help everyone out. So, um, yeah, it, it, for today, uh, I know uh, we talked about like, hey, we want to, go through that free house formula, you know, how to get a free house in, in 30 days. I know, um, here's the link. I'll throw this in the chat, which AJ, if you could keep sharing this for me, um, you know, we'll, we'll share that out, uh, you know, continuously for people to know where to follow up with you, where to learn more, how to get involved with, with uh, everything you've got going on. But, um, I, I know I read your, your background and your quick little bio, but, um, can you maybe start off and tell people, uh, one, your about your first deal. So, you know, we've got a lot of newbies on here. Love to hear that story of like how you got mm -hmm. into it. And then maybe two, your favorite deal. Like maybe tell us one of your favorite stories of, uh, you know, uh, one of the thousands of deals that you've done. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, I've been doing this 17 years. So lots of deals, lots of mm -hmm. favorite deals, lots of yeah. challenge, challenging deals, lots of failed deals. I mean, I got, I got all kinds of war stories, but uh, yeah, I, um, you know, short, short background. I got two kids, uh, you know, I'm out of Arizona. I run a for purpose development company with my two best friends. Um, the name of our company is called green elephant development. A portion of all of our proceeds goes towards animal conservation, specifically elephant conservation. And, uh, we build a lot of our houses with green building materials. We do both rehabs and spec builds, new builds. Uh, we do work with some other clients, like uh, a lot of people have come to us, add additions to their houses or, you know, a garage or something like that. So we do have, have kind of have a retail kitchen and bath division, uh, but mainly we're building for ourselves. So from day one, I was a real estate investor. Um, I did have my real estate license for a very small portion of my journey. And then uh, real estate, being an agent wasn't my thing. I never wanted to be an agent for other people. I just got my license to get access to the MLS and that kind of thing. But then once I started, uh, the, one of the key things that took me to that next level was, was building a team, you know, it's just realizing that, you know, in real estate, the most powerful thing you can do is leverage. 
it's it's the secret sauce to all of it, right? So in the beginning, you're just trying to like learn the language of real estate and trying to build a foundation, get some deals done, you know, just build, you know, just really build some rapport with people and and just try to figure out who you want on your team and how to build a team. But as fast as you can start multiplying yourself and your energy, that that's how you really scale up in this business. I started off wholesaling, no money down real estate because I didn't have any money. Um, my first deal took me over a year. You know, I, I worked really hard for nine months, did not get a deal, bought a lot of courses, lots of courses. I, I was a course junkie and you got to go back pre uh, social media and there was nothing on the internet. There was no clever investors. You know, I, I, I was part of the group that kind of birthed online education around 2007, eight, nine, 10, like that was really the beginning of people filming videos and putting content out like that. Before then it was look in the back of a newspaper, a guru would be coming to Reno, Nevada, and you may or may not know who they are, but it would say, learn real estate, learn no money down real estate. And you'd fly to Reno and pay 500 or a thousand bucks for a ticket. And you'd sit in a seminar and they'd sell you books and tapes and courses and boot camps and workshops. And I would buy all of it, you know, cause that's how you learned. And for whatever reason, I could not put a deal together. I think, and maybe some people can relate to that. I just overanalyzed, overthought. I'm so analytical. My brain works like that. Like if I can't anticipate what comes next, I like freeze up or I come up with like 7 million options and then it's overload. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and one of the challenges with buying all going to too many seminars or nowadays going down the YouTube rabbit hole and, and listening to too many gurus is it's information overload. It feels like you're drinking from a fire hose. And so that was me. And, uh, I tried, I kept, I was a professional, uh, vehicle changer. And what I mean by that is like, I would, I would, I, Oh, wholesaling. That's the way to do. Oh, well within wholesaling, it's door knocking. And I try that for like a week or two. And then somebody at a RIA meeting would say, no, 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 you don't want to do door knocking. You want to send letters. And so then I would shift over to letters. And then, oh no, you don't want to do that. You want to try driving for dollars. And I just, I never stayed the course long enough to master the skill. Mm -hmm. And so I would jump from ship to ship to ship and other people were steering my ship. And so it was just challenging. And so I ended up taking a really long time. I, I ended up getting a mentor around, I, at nine months I quit the business. And then four months I was working as a bookkeeper. And then I went to one more seminar, found a mentor, and within two months, I got my first deal. So my first big, big deal was for $40,000. So even though it took forever and I quit and I went through that whole roller coaster of emotions that a new real estate investor goes through that works for nine months and doesn't get any, any traction, it was totally worth it because that one deal paid me more than what I was making as an entire year as a bookkeeper. So I that was, that was like the freedom check because... Uh, it's kind of like Roger Bannister running the four minute mile. Nobody did it. And then this dude breaks this world record. And then all of a sudden, like a hundred people do it within the right. next year. You know, you're like, well, why did it take thousands of years for one guy to do it? And then within a year, a hundred people do it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because belief system changed. People realized that it is possible. And when I realized it was possible, I did it right. I knew I could do it again. And so my, internalization changed and the way I operated changed and I stopped overcomplicating things. And my second deal came a lot faster and so on. Uh, but that first deal, it was a very difficult deal. It was a foreclosure, a bankruptcy and a divorce all rolled up into one. Wow. And I was lucky because I had this mentor named Lyle that gave me some really great advice that I didn't think was good advice at the time. And I think, <laughs> As a, as a student, sometimes it's hard to take advice and really run with it. You, you almost have to kind of learn on your own. But he was he would basically told me, he said, Cody, if you go into this meeting like you've always gone in with your scripts and your, you know, your deal flow charts and all this stuff, you're going to screw this deal up. Like you're thinking about it too structured and rigid. People don't want to do deals with a robot. They want to do deal with somebody who has two things. And if you do these two things, you're going to get this deal. And I said, okay, Yoda, tell me the two things. Like hit me with the wisdom. And he said, it's this simple. You got to go in there and you got to be authentic 
and you got to be enthusiastic. If you do those two things, you're going to get this deal. And I'm thinking, dude, I paid you 10 grand. I worked for a year. I don't, all this heartache, all this stress, and that's your, you know, knowledge nuggets of be enthusiastic and be authentic. I'm thinking, whatever, fine. And I'm like, you got anything else? And he's like, nope, I'm not going to tell you anything else. Just go. If you absolutely need me, you can call me. But other than that, just go. And I ended up getting that deal when probably maybe like 50 or 60 other investors in town that were all fighting for this deal because it was in a, a, the historic district of downtown Phoenix. So it was a very hot area, very um, sought after deal. And he was telling everybody no and to get lost. And he had hundreds of door knockers and everybody was hitting him up. And, and the reason he picked me is because I listened to Lyle. I did not act like I was a seasoned real estate investor. I wasn't pretending to be something I'm not. I showed up and I just asked a lot of great questions to the guy. What and how questions, you know, what, what's happening that got, what, what got you here? You know, what advice would you give me? Cause he was telling me I'm going through a divorce foreclosure. I screwed up this. He was almost teaching me. And I kept asking him like, show me what not to do. What regrets do you have? And, and what your ex-wife doing right now? Or what is she going to do? And, and by the time 45 minutes went by, he brought me in his house and he was crying and he said, you know, he just like let, let go finally. And he's like, you know, you're the first investor person that I let in. And it was just because I, I'm relating to you and, and I felt really comfortable around you. Next thing you know, he's like, you want to eat some dinner? I'm going to make some spaghetti. So he made spaghetti for us and we ate dinner and we just shared a moment where it was just human to human. And he said, I, I said, look, to be honest with you, I'm not qualified to do this deal. I've never done a foreclosure. I've never done a bankruptcy. I have no idea what to tell the, the attorneys. And he said, Cody, get out of the pen. I, I want you to do this deal with me. We're going to figure this out. And I was like in shock because I didn't even ask for the deal. I was just like, okay. And I went and scrambled through my paper and I barely knew how to figure, you know, fill it out. And we ended up filling it. I called Lyle and he gave me a little bit of advice on some paperwork stuff, but Got the deal done and uh, $40,000 was was the big payday. And I couldn't believe it. It was like the light bulb went off. And I was like, man, the human element, the 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 building rapport, the influence, the negotiate, like that's the key to this whole thing. It's not all the technical real estate stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the first deal, man. It, it was it was a game changer. I, I went full time into real estate the next day. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think... Uh, hundred percent agree on the, on them being authentic, building a real relationship like that. I mean, that is what's going to separate you from everyone else. And I, I think, you know, you having a mentor, it sounds like obviously made a big impact on you on how to think about this. Um, there are, when you were saying, Hey, people might be in information overload. Like I think plenty of, of people who are hesitant to jump into real estate are in, you know, facing that right now where there's just so much information online and so many people educating about getting into real estate and all of that. So can you maybe talk through, you know, uh, how to cut through, how to find the best information, how to find a mentor, like how to find that clarity if you're hesitating on getting into this industry? Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of noise out there and a lot of people that aren't actually doing deals that are, you know, trying to teach you and trying to sell courses and stuff. And I, I think that's true with any industry, especially mm -hmm. the real estate business. So, you know, pay attention, watch what they're actually doing. You know, with social media, we kind of see a window into their world. And if you see them actively doing real estate deals, if you see them live in that dream where, you know, they got a great family, they're able to travel, they have the freedom, they're, they have that teacher kind of mindset where they uh, can take very complicated things and explain them in a, a very step-by-step -step manner. Those are the people, and, and if they have a community, right? Those are the people you want to kind of gravitate towards and just, um, I think you can have more than one mentor. I don't think it has to be like, I, I, only, I, I only can pick one. It's like, I have a lot of mentors. I have mentors in commercial real estate in different types of commercial real estate. I got mentors um, like Bobby Castro and a lady named Nina who uh, are really, really great at multifamily. And then Manny Koshpin's really great at like buildings and, and those kind of commercial deals. Uh, uh, I have mentors in my spiritual life, mentors, you know, in my health side of the business. So, uh, or uh, health side of my life. So, um, I feel like right now I'm really happy with what I'm seeing in the real estate education space. There's a lot of young energy coming into the space. 
it's really cool to see us old guys have been doing this forever. It was getting boring and stale. One of the reasons people loved Clever Investor is we made it fun. We made it cool. You know, everything we did was we didn't take things too serious. And we it was all about community and all about getting our students results. And we blew up because of it. And now I'm seeing guys like Pace Morby come into the game and he's doing really good building community. And it just, it makes my heart happy that there's kind of like this passing of the torch where this next generation of educators are taking it very serious and they're great teachers. So a lot of good stuff going on in the space. And if you feel like you found a crappy mentor, bail quick, get your money back and run. Cause <laughs> uh, it's not worth it trying to stick in there. And if you fight hard enough, you'll get your money back. Yeah. And I, I feel like, I mean, I, I've always been extremely impressed by the people you surround yourself with. Like, I think you are phenomenal at finding those mentors and those different top experts and, and, and you know, being able to kind of absorb their knowledge and hang out with the right people to, to level up your game. Um, it's serving, dude. It's serving. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Most people show up and they're like, what's in it for me? Can I, I get a thousand DMs a week? Like not exaggerating, maybe 2000. Mentor me, mentor me, you know, do this for me. And I'm like, you missed the whole concept of why somebody that has achieved any level of success would pay attention to you. It's because you're you're showing up with your hands out Trying versus serving something up, you know? And mm -hmm. I pay attention to people that are consistent, that uh, have very strong uh, moral compass and a very strong, like, this is where I want to go with my life. I know where I want to go. I'm just trying to figure out who are the people that I can go there with that serve their way to success. I've had a few people throughout my journey that I've opened up the playbook to that did not have to pay me, but they paid me in a different way. They paid me with that relationship. They paid me through serving for a very long period of time. Uh, you know, like Josiah Grimes, he was my first major protege and I let him hang out with me for six years. And he worked his way up from free all the way to partnership uh, all the way to breaking away, doing his own thing. And now he's, they're killing it, you know, Amazing. and yeah. he runs Keegley and, uh, you know, he publishes pace and just is doing big things. And I've had that happen five or six times because the right, I, I, I love it when young kids show up that are just like 16, 17, 18, and they're just, they know what they want out of life and, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to go get it. So if, unless you're willing to cut a check, show up and serve. Yep. Love that. And then I, I think, uh, I mean, you talk about mindset all the time on, you know, uh, various social platforms. And I think uh, that's one of the biggest things that our audience can learn from is uh, continuing to have that that mindset and, and setting goals like that. Um, I just a quick reminder for everybody too. feel free to jump in the comments, you know, say where you're where you're at. It looks like somebody's in Arizona. I know that's uh, you're in Phoenix today. Right, Co Cody? Mm -hmm. It looks like you're in your, your studio. Yeah. Um, so feel free to jump in, say hi. And again, ask questions uh, if you'd like there. But um, I have plenty of questions on my end too. So excited to, to be able to, to chat, but um, I know you, you, you uh, obviously uh, have, have the, the background in this, you know, real estate, real estate investing educator space, one of the originals. Um, what made you uh, inspired to create this free house formula uh, uh, specifically like the, the course, the education, the event? Um, what did you see that uh, told you like, Hey, this is something that I can really you know, give to the world. Yeah, so this particular training, uh, so what the Freehouse Formula is, is a creative finance training, right? So it's like, okay, when most investors, when they get into the business, they pick a strategy, right? They're like, oh, I want to learn wholesaling, or I want to learn rehabbing, or I want to become a landlord. And they work really hard to generate leads or generate relationships that break, get deal flow. And they have one tool in their tool belt. Like wholesalers, a lot of times just show up and say, I'm going to make you a bunch of low ball cash offers. And they make low ball cash offers to as many homeowners as possible, hoping that 10 or 15 percent of them say yes. And that's how they get their wholesale inventory. The problem with that approach is if only 10 percent say yes, there's another 90 percent that say no. So that's a lot of wasted energy and marketing. And so one of the things my mentor worked with me from day one he would not allow me to just show up with one tool. He was constantly like, all right, Cody. And we get off this whiteboard. He'd be like, all right. So if you show up and they have a, a, a free and clear house, these are all of your options that you can do. 
And if you show up and they have a mortgage on the property, but little to no leftover equity, here's all the options of things that you can do. And if you have a mortgage on the property with a ton of equity, here's all the other things that you can do. And what happened is over just repeating that same thing over and over and over for years, it started to, I started to understand like what he's teaching me is to be a transactional engineer. It's somebody that can show up and as the seller is talking or the realtor is talking or the wholesaler, whoever is bringing me the deal, as they're talking, it's like a chess match. I'm starting to visualize all the next moves of different things that we can do to uncover the hidden profit centers and or influence the person bringing the deal or selling you the deal to say yes. And a lot of times, if you're not paying attention to their wants, their needs, their hopes, their dreams, their fears, and what they're trying to accomplish, and you just come in kind of bulldogging your way into a deal saying, this is what I want out of the deal, you're going to end up breaking rapport and not getting the deal. So the whole concept of a free house formula is how do I show up and be a transactional engineer? How do I have four or five, six options at the ready so I can, like the Marine Corps, no lead left behind, no deal left behind. Like I, I, I know there's a way creatively to do this deal. And also think about this. And the reason I, I, I've been wanting to do this course for a long time, but it's so difficult to take a complicated concept like Subject twos, wraparound mortgages, contract for deeds, agreement for sales, lease options, sandwich lease options, all these creative tools that are out there and simplify them into like three steps, right? Like how do you do that? Well, it took me a long time to get to the place where I was ready to actually do it. But when I saw the market starting to shift, because back in the day, I was doing a ton of sub twos and wrap mortgages and all this stuff. And then it kind of went away. Right, the market was different, and and as the markets change, different tools become more popular, mm -hmm. and it start. I started saw it shifting, and I'm like, man, this is going to be huge, especially as we near the top of a market and things shift, as interest rates start to go up. Anybody who has a killer mortgage on their property, the next ten years, you think mortgage rates are going to stay the same? No, oh, they're going to go up. Right, uh -huh. the, the, we printed too much cash, inflation's happening, the mortgage rates are gonna go up, the economy's gonna change. And when it does, anybody who has a great mortgage on their property, it's gonna be like gold, right? And so I wanna acquire as many pieces of real estate as possible right now, right? Because if you understand inflation, owning real estate is actually a hedge against inflation. So mm -hmm. if you own all this real estate with great debt on it, as the, as the interest, or the, the mortgage interest rates go up, that's really valuable. And so I want as much of that as possible. How do I get sellers to give me their house with their debt included or to be the bank for me? Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you guys, I'm going through a conventional mortgage right now on a property I'm buying in, in uh, Las Vegas. It's a $2.1 million house. And I can't even tell you, I, I own like 20 businesses, like 20 LLCs and all this money coming in from all these LLCs. It is the most, I'd rather get freaking surgery than go to the bank. It's that painful. I've never, it's so absurd on how, I'd rather fly on a plane with 30 masks on my head. Like it is so painful to go to a bank right now and borrow money, especially uh, when you are an entrepreneur. So how do you bypass banks? How do you never have to sign uh and, uh, and um, guarantee a loan again. The free house formula shows you how that how cr how real estate investors never have a money problem. We have a creativity problem, and how to go and get these deals from leads that are normally dead leads, right? A lot of times we're not even marketing. It's not like I have to market for these. I could just call up every wholesaler in town and say, "Hey, what are you doing with all your notes, all your dead leads? Give them to me." And I'll, if I get a deal, I'll cut you a little money. But now when I'm talking to a seller or my team is talking to a seller, we got 15 tools in our tool belt. That's the free house formula. And almost, you know, every single week we're buying properties that where the seller is basically handing us their house. And sometimes, and we use these different tools to get the job done. But uh, a lot of times they cash flow with significant cash flow. We get the title of the property. So we get the depreciation. We get any amortization that happens, any appreciation that happens. 
and you can own a great portfolio of cash flowing rentals without ever going to a bank. That's the system. Love it. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, it's no wonder you have kind of that, you know, the clever investor uh, uh, nickname and, and background in the creative financing. I mean, I knew, I know that was the, the goal with uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, putting this whole toolbox together for people, but, um, and you said you have the, the live event that's this week too, right? Yeah. It was amazing how popular this topic is. We sold out a month early. Wow. I only had a hundred spots. I sold 140 of them. Uh, so we're trying to rearrange the seating right now to make sure everybody can fit. Uh, it's going to be a great event. I'm bringing in some of the best creative financing experts in the country because it's, it's kind of legal. It's a legal thing, right? So like I'm bringing in a couple of attorneys that really understand the legal side of how do you properly do a sub two on a conventional mortgage, on an FHA mortgage, on a VA loan? Like, can you do it on certain types of loans? Can you not? The answer is yes for almost almost all the types of loans, but there are nuances and a lot of creative finance is paperwork heavy. So once you master your paperwork and you understand the steps involved, so we're going to go through kind of all the different ways to get yourself into a deal. There are creative ways where you can um, buy a portfolio of properties. Like every once in a while as a wholesaler, you'll come across somebody that's like, uh, as you're doing your marketing, they're like, well, I got you know, 40 houses I'd like to sell all at once. Well, that's overwhelming for a wholesaler. If you're making a cash offer on 40 homes all at one time, like it feels very overwhelming to try to figure that out. And mm -hmm. also to a seller, they're trying to figure out uh, how do I avoid taxes on this? Well, what if there was a creative way to get the seller to finance you the deal and you do it in a trust where you can show the seller or create a way to avoid hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes? You think they'd pick you over your competition? They right. would. So this is not necessarily just beginner stuff. This is like next level, some mm -hmm. of it, right? But the foundation is how do I how do I do a subject to transaction? How do I do a wrap out around mortgage? How do I do a contract for deed? When should I do those things? Yeah. Yeah. One, one thing too, I mean, I, you touched on this a couple of times, but I think uh, you'd said, Hey, you, the goal is to problem solve. It's to, to ask great questions. And I think that, you know, that applies to, to, so any, anyone in sales, anyone in customer you know, service, any, any role like that, um, building a great relationship is about asking great questions and being able to have that serving mindset. Can you maybe for the people who are trying to do their first deal or maybe are trying to get more efficient at it, can you walk through some of those great discovery questions that you have uh, that yeah. you would sit down you know, with a seller and ask them and kind of talk through that, that chess match that's going on? Sure. Yeah. I mean, first and foremost, like if you just think about it from like the highest level, what are mm -hmm. things we want to know? Right. Why are you selling? How fast do you want your money? Right. So like hot button things. Um, what do you want? What are your goals for, you know, what, what do you, what, what are you going to do with the money once you get it? Do you have a mortgage on your property? Right. Do you have, do you have a loan currently? And if you do, what, what's the loan details? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, pretty much that's it. I mean, like literally it's like once I figure out if they have a loan or not, I'm, I'm I trying to identify three things, right? Free and clear, Mortgage with no equity, mortgage with a lot of equity. It's that simple. So once I know, so like take free and clear. What can I do with free and clear? Mm -hmm. You do anything, right? Like literally there's, there's no limitations of how I can structure that deal. I can say, look, I'll make you an all cash offer. No. Okay. Well, would you consider, okay, who, who in a trade, like if I go to buy your property right now, Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to a bank and buy a loan right? or, or I'm going to go to a bank and borrow money. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I'm going to give it to you. Why don't you, who's the, who's the person that always wins when you go to the bank, the banker. Bank. Well, why don't you be the banker? Mm -hmm. Right. Why don't you win? Why don't you get extra interest? What if I showed you a way to sell your top dollar? If I give you cash, I have to buy it at a discount in order to make money on my money. Cause you know how hard it is to make 150,000 in cash or 200,000. It's very difficult. So if I give that to you or I go and borrow that, it's very expensive for me to do that. But if you're my bank and I pay you interest on the money that you're lending to me, I can still come in with some money, right? There's a million ways to structure a seller carry. A little bit of money down, they carry the rest. No money down, they carry the rest. Lots of money down, they carry the rest. Uh, amortize it over 30 years. Amortize it over 40 years. Uh, you know, 
interest rates, that tier 1% per year for the next five years, right? I can mm -hmm. go to them and say, hey, what if, uh, um, what, what if I make you payments, equal monthly payments, I'll pay you, what do you want for your property? I want 150,000. Okay, I'll pay you 150,000 in equal monthly payments until paid over the next three years. What did I just say there, Matt? What, what, what was I conveying to the seller? Oh, say it again. Sorry, Cody. Broke up. If right I there. made equal monthly payments to you, right? Uh -huh. You want 150000 for your property. If I make equal monthly payments over the next 30 years, mm -hmm. equal monthly payments basically means I'm not paying you interest. Right. We just took 150000 divided it by, well, by third, you know, through that many years. Every, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is that? 360 months? What's 30 years? Yeah. Yep. Something like that. And so it's, uh, it's, it's, no interest. Imagine being able to borrow money from a bank where you don't pay any interest. How bad would that be? Right. Good deal. And there's no personal <laughs> guarantee. So free and clear, there's a million ways to structure that deal. And literally the negotiation is, what do you want? I want 150. Okay. I'll give you 150. Oh, you will? Sure. But it's how do I give you 150? Mm -hmm. Just go into any mortgage calculator and start pulling the levers. I what? There's only so many levers. Down payment, interest rate, length loan. Right. So yeah. if you say I want 150 and I say, OK, and I say I'll make you equal monthly payments over the next 30 years. And you say, well, I want interest. And I say, oh, OK, well, how much interest do you want? I don't know. Uh, I want four percent. OK, I'll give you four percent. Why don't we do it like this, Matt? Year one, I pay you zero. Right. Give me some time to rent the property, fix it up, get do all that, make a little money. And year at the end of year one, it'll go to one percent. Then. Year two, go to 2%, 3%, 4%, and then it'll stop at 4% forevermore. Is that fair mm -hmm. to you? Oh, yeah, that's fair to me. Uh, yeah, like So like, or I can say, okay, well, what, what if instead of me paying you 4% interest, what if I just pay you 155000 or 160000 for your property, equal monthly payments until paid? Mm -hmm. As long as the price, what I'm looking for, as long as rental rates are higher than my carrying cost of the property, right? My PITI, principal interest taxes and insurance. As long as there's a cash flow spread there, I'm good, right? And my yeah. standard rule of thumb is $400 or more. A lot of times I'm getting $700, $800, $1,000 a month in pure cash flow on a deal that I show up and they're like, like I do this a lot in small towns where it's like a double wide manufactured home on a half acre lot in a little podunk town. Those kind of properties, not really trading a lot. They're, they're, there's not a lot of buying and selling activity in the smaller towns. And a lot of times those people have unfinanceable assets, right? Banks don't like to lend on a $75,000 double wide property. But so that means they have to sell it using seller financing. So I love marketing to those small towns because I can create, you know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month in pure cash flow off of every one of those deals. And the negotiation's really easy. Yeah. And so that's free and clear. Well, what if they have a mortgage? What are our options? Like they have a mortgage and let's say they have little to no equity. What can I do? Right. I could sub to it. A subject mm -hmm. to is literally me showing up and saying, look, if I go to a bank, I'm going to borrow money. Well, you already have a loan on the property. So you leave the loan in place. It's very expensive for me to borrow money to get a loan, to put a loan on a property that already has a loan. So instead of the banker winning and making all these fees and all this extra stuff, why don't I just give you that money? You leave your property, mm -hmm. your, your mm -hmm. loan in place, and I'll take over the payments. But then what we'll do is we'll separate the mortgage and the deed, right? So deed is the transfer of ownership. The mortgage is your the money that you're paying to the bank. It's the terms of your loan. And so what's happening is we're just separating them by having them deed the property over to us and leaving the note in place. And the note being in place, if it's a good loan, meaning rents are up here, principal interest taxes insurance are down here, if there's still that cash flow spread and it's big enough, then I may want to leave that mortgage in place versus getting a new one because right. it's uh, cheaper and faster for me. That's a subject too. The other way to do it is called a wrap on mortgage. Just leaving mortgage in place and literally creating a new mortgage on top of the old mortgage. 
And in the case where there's little to no leftover equity, if I do that, I just want the terms of the new mortgage to be the same as the terms of the underlying mortgage. It's called a mirror wrap, mm -hmm. right? Well, what if there's a bunch of leftover equity? So there's a loan on it, but there's also the seller wants another 50 grand paid to them. Well, what if we just like free and clear, what if I work it out to where it's like, look, I'm going to take over your mortgage. I'm going to deal with all the repairs, all the insurance, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And the extra 50 grand, I'm going to give you 10 of the 50 grand right now, right? I'll pay 10 in cash. You're going to carry back the other 40 and I'm going to pay you 5% interest on that $4,000 loan that you are carrying. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll balloon it in seven years, right? So I'm going to take over this whole thing for the next seven years. It's amortized over 30, but balloons in seven. Mm -hmm. So there's a sunset. I wrap around the second, that is the carry back, the underlying mortgage, which is already on the property. And I wrap the whole thing, a new mortgage that gives the details of the deal. So when I make my payment, some of it goes to homeboy for carrying back the 40,000. The rest goes to the bank and pays off the, the loan. And I have the property, right? I have rights to the mm -hmm. property in my name now. So that kind of creative financing allows me to just literally go back and forth with the seller 50 million times as, until we come to a yes. Depending on what's important to them, I'll have to just keep pulling the levers. Do you want more down? Do you want more interest? Do you want it longer? Do you want it shorter? And once you get good at kind of playing that chess game, just by saying what's important to you, what does your wife think? How, how does this make you feel? What else would you like to see to get to feel comfortable to okay an agreement here today? Love it. Yeah. It? So, so the, covering those levers and then those three buckets of the free and clear, the no equity or the equity with a loan on it. Or is that uh, really like the framework for the free house formula or just that's case all, Yeah, that's it. So that's all acquisition stuff, right? So mm -hmm. how do we end up with a free house? Because let's say I show up and Matt, you, you have a, a, let's keep it simple. You have a free and clear house. You want to, you want 150. I tell you, fine, I'll give you the 150. You say, but I want, 15 grand down, Cody, because I just want some skin in the game from you. And mm -hmm. I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, I don't have $15,000. Like, I got nothing. I, I Cody told me I could get a free house, and now I got to give you 15 grand. What's going on? Well, look, if the deal pencils, that's all that matters, because what's going to happen is now I got to come up with a creative way to give you the 15, but then get it back really quickly, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm probably going to have to go borrow the 15, right, from somebody, land for my dad and my grandma, but to pitch them on like, look, you're going to give me 15 within 30 days. I'm going to give you back 16 or within 30 days. I'm going to give you back 17. Okay. Come on, grandma. You trust me, right? Don't worry. I got you. And then the way I'm going to get that money right back is on the acquisition. I do a seller carry, but on when we, when I sell it. Okay. Or when I get our tenant in there, I have choices. I can rent it like a normal rental. That's not going to get me the 15 or 17 back. Right. I can lease option it with my option price being 20,000. That means somebody, right? Do you understand what a lease option mm -hmm. is? So a lease option is mm -hmm. simply a rental with an option to buy. Right. And if I structure it right on the front end, when I lease option or on the back end, I can say, look, let's say my, my uh, purchase price was 150. My mm -hmm. monthly payment is... $900 PITI. It rents in the area for 1400. Okay. I'm making these numbers up, but I, I got to pay you 900, but it rents for 1400. Okay. And I'm paying you 150 to buy it. When I go to lease option and I'm going to say, look, 20 grand as an option price gets you the right to buy this property for $170,000 within 18 months and your rental agreement You'll have an 18 month option. You'll have an 18 month rental agreement and your rents will be 1500 a month. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of a rent premium. I'm going to ask for 20 grand down to give you the right to buy this property within 18 months for 170,000. Well, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that would do that because they have bad credit or they're an entrepreneur and they don't have the ability to go, you know, they don't have a W2 paying job, but they make internet money. And they're like, that's a cool house. That's right where I want to live. I'll pay you 20 grand to step in and make it feel like it's my house. 
and then I'll execute the option within 18 months. I'll buy it for 170. By then, 18 months later, I've got my my taxes done and my credit's a little better now, so I can I can do that. Mm -hmm. That's a lease option. And then when they give me the 20 grand, I go back to grandma, say, here's your 15 or 16 grand back. Thanks for doing that. I got a couple grand left over to put in my pocket to maybe fix the property up. So it's creative finance on the front end, lease option on the back. Or I can do creative finance on the front end and I can resell or finance it on the back. Mm -hmm. I can ask the seller to be the bank and then I can be the bank. And literally there's two creative finance transactions back to back. And now I'm selling it just on different terms, right? Mm -hmm. I might buy it at 0% interest and I might sell it at 9% interest. So I created a 9% uh, just, guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just action engineering. I might buy it with 15 grand down but get 50 grand down from the from the back end buyer. I I love uh transaction engineering is such a great mindset to be able to come in with it. Uh I also Donovan, yes, it's being recorded. Um Monique and Antonio, you uh I think you know Cody you did a great job kind of explaining more than just the broader idea behind this tool set and how to identify which scenario uh, the the seller might be in and and what they're open to, um, you know, through these discovery questions. So I think you answered their questions as well. But again, anybody, you know, I've been monitoring the chat. Anybody who wants to jump in, ask questions, go for it too. Um, Cody, one thing I did want to ask you about last time during our uh, thought leader interview, I know you talked quite a bit about the state of the economy and where you see the market headed. And, and I know you touched on it a bit here around, oh, hey, now might be a good time to acquire, you know, finance or acquire properties through seller financing. Like you talked about that specific strategy, but can you maybe give us your updated view on where things are heading? And then um, any any of these creative financing tools that you think are more, more valuable now or that our audience should really think about more now, uh, given the state of the market? Yeah. So, uh, Obviously, none of us have a crystal ball, but I feel very strong and bullish about the real estate space for the next six to 12 months. I feel like it's in a really good place. Um, very tight inventory is keeping you know prices up. It's the, the builders can't build fast enough. So I think we're good for a little while. I am really worried about the stock market next year. I have a lot of friends that are some of the biggest, best investors in the world when it comes to stock. Guys that are making 50 plus million dollars a year in pure stock profits um telling me they're not looking good it's not looking very good next year for the stock market i don't know why they, I, I'm, I'm not as knowledgeable in that as they are but i'm like so what are you doing about it a lot of them are like well i'm buying long-term holds i'm buying a lot of 2024 options and i'm pulling m lots of money out and putting it on the sideline so that's interesting thought because you know is as much as I want to believe that a stock market crash won't affect real estate, it will, right? It'll affect the economy. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like right now creative financing is hot. It's going to remain hot. If interest rates go up, which I really believe they will, it's going to become even more valuable tool for, for you to be deploying. Because right now, like I said earlier, as it, 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 right now we're at an all-time high in inflation. I think it went up 4% from this time last year. So it's uh, an indicator of what's to come. The economists are split on whether or not this is permanent or temporary. I don't think that our supply chain issues are going to get fixed within the next year. I think it's going to take a while. I just flew, you know, literally, I, I want to show you this because this is just so freaking absurd. It's so absurd that it makes you angry. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can find this. Go ahead. I'm I'm looking on my phone. Hold on. I really wanted to show you this. Yeah. As you're looking again, uh, reminder to the audience: feel free to throw throw uh, you know questions in the chat. Happy to try to get to as many as I can in the next you know ten to fifteen minutes here while we still have Cody on. Yeah. Look look at this, um, son. Yeah. Oh, did she send that in my DMs? She sent me a picture. And I, oh man. So I can't find it. DMs might be buried. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I wanted to show you this picture she sent. She texted it to me, but for some reason it's not coming up. I can't find her text. It was the port out. She was flying in an airplane. It was the port. Yeah. Outside. There was. Up it is. I'm not even kidding. 
her, her thing was, thanks, Biden. And it was a picture of hundreds of yeah, cargo there. ships just sitting out at sea waiting. I mean, it's a mess. So I really believe that, you know, the next next 12 months, I'm my my personal strategy is we're we do it all, but we're really focusing on a couple of things. Nationwide wholesaling, right? And co-wholesaling. So we're a big dispo company. We have lots of cash buyers actively looking for deals. The market's super tight. They make decisions very, very quickly. And we're selling properties in like 15, 20 different states right now at warp speed. So nationwide dispo wholesaling, co-wholesaling. And if you have a deal, go to sendusthedeals.com and give us your deal. And we would love to help you move it. Great. Um, uh, we're spec building a bunch of big boys right now. And we're pre-selling them to limit our risk. Uh, I just sold one deal where we bought it, bought, bought the property for six hundred fifty thousand, tore it down, rebuilt a thirty three hundred square foot house in one of the hottest zip codes, and pre-sold it uh, for two point three million and locked in a seven hundred and eighty thousand dollar profit. I have five of those going right now, so we're we're doing lots of spec builds. Um, I have about twenty two different smaller rehabs where we're just turning and burning rehabs. But my favorite strategy. And, and we're buying a lot on creative finance. But my favorite strategy right now, honestly, is luxury Airbnbs. Hmm. Uh, I, I love the luxury Airbnb market. I think it's something that uh, it's a great strategy. You can, uh, I call it the Burr B&B method, where I'm basically going out and I'm finding these luxury deals. We're buying them, renovating them, theming them, furnishing them, listing them getting them operational. We're using private investor money to do it. And then we're immediately refinancing out into a LLC loan at 4.8%. And these things are all bringing in between, you know, 300 to $400,000 a year in, mm -hmm. in cash flow. And we have about a 25% expense rate. So the rest of it is profit. So Amazing. yeah, beautiful. I mean, uh, get 50 of these. And I'm at, I'm at 12 right now. We're going for 50. Amazing. Uh, um, really quick. I, we had people asking where, where do you send the deal? Uh, is it send send us the deals.com. Send us the deals.com. Yep. Okay, great. That'll go directly to my business partner, Bryant. Uh, our team will analyze the deal real quick. This is for people that, uh, let's say you go to the freehouseformula.com. You take mm -hmm. our training, right? And you're out there and you're wholesaling and now you're doing some creative finance and you get a deal under contract that you either want to dispo or sell to me. You would go to sendusthedeals.com. I want you to be direct with the seller. You submit the deal. We'll vet it and we'll tell you right out of the gates. This is what we think we can move it for. and Or, hey, we want to buy that from you. Will you take five grand, seven grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, you know, what, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, we're buying in a bunch of different states. And if you find anything like you know, any of those luxury Airbnb type of properties, we're buying those like crazy as well. So we'll buy awesome. the cheap stuff. We'll buy the expensive stuff. Yeah. Love it. Um, appreciate you. And again, we've been uh, sharing out resources throughout this whole thing uh, around Freehouse Formula and then uh, the send us the deals .com as well. So we'll we'll make sure to, to include links to all of that uh, when we when we share this out with it, with our whole community. But yeah. Um, yeah, what, one one question. This is a little, uh, you know, outside the box, but one question I did have. I've noticed you've really uh, doubled down on your health recently. Mm -hmm. Like you've really had a renewed energy around being in shape. You're looking great. You know, you, you post on uh, on IG about that all the time. So, can you tell us about that journey and 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 how much that's affected your daily performance? And I think that could be a really useful tip for people too. Cool. It's this simple. I, and, and I'm going to get a little political here, but I'll keep it clean. Okay. When I see a national pandemic and I see the power and the money moves being made and I sit there and I just think about what I would do if I was in charge, it's real simple, right? Because I, I, I hate the clown circus world we're living in right now. All the absurdities of just how much absurdity is going on like with, with 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 cloth masks and paper masks and just like everybody just acting just completely freaking nuts with misinformation and propaganda and i'm like what would i do if i was in charge first thing i would do i would say look
who is this affecting the most? Elderly and unhealthy people that have pre-existing conditions that a lot of them are overweight. And we have an obesity problem, in, and especially in this country. We have a, uh, I call it diobesity problem, which is a sugar problem mixed with overweight problem, right? And a lot of people are not encouraged or held accountable or motivated enough to do something about it. We all want to hide behind a pill or a prescription or, you know, have bury our head in the sand and pretend somebody else is going to fix this problem when the simple solution is to take extreme ownership of what you can control, which is yourself. And for me, I wanted to set a standard of, you know what, I'm not, I was gaining a lot of weight. I wasn't is physically active. I wasn't eating healthy. I wasn't drinking a gallon of water. I wasn't getting morning sunshine. I wasn't getting fresh air. I was looping, watching the news, going down this crazy political rabbit hole where everybody is negative and unhealthy and, and it's, it was toxic. And I just said, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm not going to do this anymore. And if I was in charge, I'd take all this stupid money that were blown on the dumbest stuff. And I would, or I would go to the, uh, 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 pharmaceutical companies. And I would say, look, you want to make trillions of dollars? Cool. But you got to give a large portion of that profit back to the people that you're making it off of. But, and I would get a health and education czar and I would push Dr. Fauci off the news channel. And I put the health and education czar up there and I'd say, we're going to do a national challenge where everybody in the country is going to get paid to get fit. And I'm going to give them, I'm going to throw as much money at this problem as possible. And I'm going to say, everybody, get your ass outside, drink your gallon of water, walk in the morning, wave to your freaking neighbors, put a smile on your face, get your butt to the gym. I'll pay your gym membership for the next year. You know, I'm going to, we're going to start getting healthier, cleaner food, better water, better nutrition. And every day, that's what you would hear on the news channels all day, every day is just this repetitive, like we're going to get in shape, people. We're going to be the healthiest country in the nation. And watch what would happen. People would make more money. Their relationships would be better. They'd have more connection. They'd feel better about themselves. I feel I'm in God mode because I I, I went and did my friend, Andy Frisella, he's leading the charge. He, he created a challenge called 75 hard. This is my third time doing it, but man, you're doing this stuff. And you're like, man, the first 30 days sucked. You think I want to work out twice a day? One mandatory outside? You think I want to drink a gallon of water? You think I want to read 10 pages? You know how hard it is to read 10 pages of a book? <laughs> it's well, difficult if yeah. you have to do it every day. But if mm -hmm. we were rewarded for it and, you know, I'm doing it out of pure, you know, mental strength. Imagine if I got paid to do it. I'd be really mm -hmm. motivated to, to get my butt in shape. So that's kind of my soapbox health and fitness thing, because I just, I know what I can control and that's me. And yeah. if I'm going to, if I'm going to get COVID, I want the best chances for my body to heal itself. You know, that's, that's in eating right, drinking right. I cut out all alcohol and uh, I feel amazing because of it. And I have, I've had COVID. It sucked, but you know, mm -hmm. because I don't have all those other challenges, it's not as scary for me. Yeah. I mean, I know we're in a crazy time right now from uh, from that perspective, but I think regardless, that is a great mindset to bring to, to you know, your, your, your life. And I I do agree like, hey, you're uh, the information you you consume, too, is part of that diet. You have an information diet, too, and that's going to affect your mental health and everything. So I, I love how you've uh, been you know, had a renew, renewed focus on, on uh, you know, helping yourself that way. But it feels um, amazing, dude. I yeah. highly recommend 75 hard. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I know a good number of investors who, who are going through that right now. So I, I don't know if it's just hit, if you guys are leading the charge in the real estate investing world too or what, but um, you know, it's it's certainly uh, gotten uh, big reviews from a lot of people who it, it's helped a ton. So um, this is great. We already we already have people jump in here saying they're submitting deals to you too. So uh, you know, we'll keep awesome. we'll keep sharing that resource. I know we only have a, a couple minutes here left. Any last questions? Throw it in in the chat. Um, you know, where can our community get more involved with Freehouse Formula, with you, um, you know, and, and just everything you've got going on, man? Yeah. So I have a free report that you guys can check out that kind of breaks down the three different strategies, like kind of what we went over here today. It's just uh, housesforfree.com. 
Uh, just go to housesforfree.com. You'll grab a free report, free training video. You know, I'll let you know right now. I'm going to pitch you on joining and getting the free house formula training. It's $97 one time. That's it. It's super affordable. Uh, people think I'm freaking crazy for giving. It's the best training I've ever put together. And the contracts alone are probably $10,000, $12,000 worth of contracts. Like if you just pay $97 to get $10,000 worth of contracts, it would be the greatest investment in the education game you've ever made. I'm doing it because it's. An, I, I actually don't care about your $97. Uh, I, I care about you becoming part of this clever community and this movement where I want people to really start thinking bigger than just wholesaling. Um, really think about the wealth building, the end game. How do we get out of real estate? There's only one way. All right. Rehabbing. I make, I make two or $3 million a year rehabbing houses. I make millions wholesaling houses. I stop tomorrow. I'm broke again. Like I'm, I'm asking Matt for a job, right? Because I'm like, I don't have a business. If I'm not hustling, it's not, it's not reoccurring. There's no cash flow. There's no asset there. I'm just, I, I, I'm firing myself every single time I sell a deal. The only way out of this rat race is through owning real estate, which is why I like the luxury Airbnb. How do you take a normal rental and three exit, turn it into an Airbnb. So I love that model. If you buy them right, you buy them in areas with no HOAs, you buy them in hot travel areas, you know, even when the pandemic happened, my friends that were doing Airbnbs, like for a month or two, it like imploded and then it immediately exploded because mm -hmm. people were like, well, shoot, if I'm going to stay in a house, I might as well stay in a dope house with the pool and fire pits and barbecues and do a staycation with my family. Mm -hmm. Right. And they drive down the street and do a staycation. Um, so that was awesome. I love that. And then really just using creative finance to get a portfolio. And most of us, I have very strong financial strength and it sucks for me to go to a bank. I hate it. And, and I have a lot of money. I can't imagine if you were just starting off, like, how do I get my first 10 rentals subject to wraparound mortgages, contract for deeds, agreement for sales, like AITDs. These are how you get rentals mm -hmm. creatively. And a lot of times you end up with it free or very little money into the deal by using creative finance to get into it, a lease option to get your money back or creative finance to get into it, creative finance to get out of it, sandwich yourself in the middle. All of that is inside the free house formula. So uh, you, you, you have the best training in the world at your fingertips. And uh, next year, I'm, I'm going to be done selling courses. A lot of people don't know this yet, Matt, but I'm, I'm working my way out of the business. So I'm going to change up the whole way I do things here at Clever Investor. So if you've ever wanted to take a, a class or a course from me, now's the time. Got it. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, I, I really, really appreciate your time in the community. I loved having you on. So um, phenomenal. I always have a great time, Cody. Uh, you know, uh, we'll have to do it again at some point. And I appreciate you, uh, you know, coming on here for us. Hey, this was fun. Hey, thanks, Alan. Appreciate you, man. Uh, as <laughs> far as my spirit animal, there you go. that's a great yeah. quote. And if you want mentorship, uh, somebody asked earlier, do yeah. I do mentorship? I do do mentorship. Um, uh, I don't do one-on-one -on -one stuff anymore, but I do it as a group. So every Thursday, me and my, my mentoring students meet, um, uh, you can check it out at mentoringapplication.com forward slash rehab. Uh, oh, that's awesome. one, one of my favorite videos. Um, so yeah, if, if you want help, I'm here for you. Perfect. Well, well, we'll link to all this stuff. Um, you know, we're going to share this out with our full community. And uh, once again, uh, you know, appreciate the time. Cool. Thanks for having me on, Matt. Yeah. Thanks again, everybody. Uh, this is Matt Camp with Deal Machine and everybody watching. Uh, happy deal finding.